Hey, happy Tuesday, everybody. Mark again here, Weatherman Plus. Now, I'm going to update you on what's going on with the track and the impacts on Nicole. It has shifted a little bit further west, which brings the impacts more to the north with the rainfall especially. Now, there is new watches and warnings out. I will go through that with y'all. What you're looking at here is the higher levels of the storm. And you can see at the 500 millibars that you have this dry air still coming in. And it is going to cut off all this. That will stop it from being a subtropical. And all this is going to tighten up by all this deep ocean heat content right here. And it will become tropical. All this moisture you see up here will get pulled into the front of this storm as it gets closer. Now you can also see the big wind rally that this storm is bringing. This is all tropical storm force wind field. But as you put it on for the rest of the forecast, you can see where the tropical storm and the hurricane winds are going to come. It's still going across Florida and coming back. So it is bringing tropical storm force winds all the way up towards Columbia, South Carolina into Georgia. But now you can see that the hurricane force winds. So for northern Bahamas, where you have the hurricane warning, you have hurricane force wind gusts coming your way. I'm still showing in the 90s. And it is bringing hurricane force wind gusts all the way from Merritt Island, all the way down below Port St. Lucie with hurricane force winds right offshore. And I am showing that this is going to move in a little bit closer as well. So you got to keep in mind the whole time you're going to be getting 20 to almost 30 foot waves. You do have a one section where it will be 30 to 33 foot waves as this comes on shore. So your beaches are definitely going to get hit pretty hard. And it is predicted to stay a tropical storm all the way up towards 1 a.m. on Saturday towards New Jersey, Maryland, Delaware, all in this region. Some are showing that it will go offshore with the wind still east side loaded at that point. Some are showing that it will go further to the west and it could be more impacts. It's still too far down the road. The first three days is this cone right here. So you do have tropical storm watches now on the western side of Florida. The main area that's been hit by Ian, this is not going to be the rainfall even close to what Ian was or the winds. You have tropical storm warnings in all of this blue all the way across Florida. I got a little bit better information. And you have hurricane watches also in this pink with hurricane warnings for northern Bahamas. Now this was put out at 538 this morning by Melbourne, Florida. So you have the storm surge warning and all of this purple is still three to five feet. You have your tropical storm warning and all of this red. Plus you have your hurricane watch that's in all of this pink section even further to the south. You have your tropical storm watches across the western side of Florida. And so far your flood warning is this green section right here which will grow also. But I also have this graphic for y'all. All these links are in the description, guys. So if you're in the pink, you have chances for winds greater than 110 miles per hour. The red is 74 to 110. The orange is 58 to 73. And the potential winds of 39 to 57 is the yellow. So if you zoom in your area, you can see what is going on. You see all the gray all the way from Atlanta, South Carolina, even North Carolina. You have chances for less than 39 miles per hour winds. But all the yellow is all the way from the Florida Panhandle, portions of Alabama, into Georgia and northern Florida. But now you have all of this orange section. All of this orange, you can expect winds 58 to 73 miles per hour as it becomes even stronger. And you do have your section for southern Florida as well. But all this red, you can expect winds up to 110 miles per hour. This is going to be your wind gust all the way from West Palm Beach, Port St. Lucie, all the way up to Palm Bay and Melbourne. This big section is where the highest winds are going to be as it comes on shore. I'm still showing it's going to be late and it's going to be a lot of high waves as well. Also your tornado threat. So for tomorrow going into Thursday, you have a 2% chance of tornadoes as this comes on shore. These bandings are going to keep coming north and further north giving you the chance for your tornadoes with a big threat. So it's Orlando, Florida, Port St. Lucie, Florida, Palm Bay, Florida, Deltona, Florida, and Melbourne, Florida. And as you go Thursday into Friday, you do have your severe weather risk right here for the central U.S. also for that system that is moving up. But you do have a big 5% all the way from Florida all the way to the edge of North Carolina for severe weather. And it will be a lot of heavy rainfall, guys. So as you see here on high resolution rapid refresh for your precipital water, it does bring a lot of heavy banding towards northern 
Bahamas as you go into 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. And as you keep going through the day, you can see it keeps going over Florida for hours. Now we're already at 8 o'clock at night. You've been getting rain all day long. And now you're starting to get the heavy banding come across eastern Florida. And it does come across all the way till midnight and beyond. So your rainfall totals has changed since it did shift a little bit further to the west. And for your five days from National Weather Service, it did grow in the four to six inches right here for Orlando and northern. Also down the east coast of Florida. More areas showing the chances for four to six inches. And you have a hot spot right here above Orlando for chances for six to ten inches adding up. Also for northern Bahamas, you have still have that chance for the four to six inches in the yellow, two to four inches in the green, one to two in the light green. And the two to four inches does spread all the way to South Carolina and North Carolina. I will keep this updated as we go along. So of course, this is bringing flash flooding risk. So through Wednesday morning, you do have a marginal risk right here for Florida. But as you go through Thursday, it will grow through the whole state with a big slight risk for flash flooding. And as you go through Friday morning, the marginal will grow all the way from Georgia, South Carolina and North Carolina. And the slight risk will grow into Georgia and South Carolina as well. All this for flash flooding. Now you can see here on the latest update from H Wharf that is not really in 80 degree temperatures yet. It is staying at bay. But once you get to just 27 degrees Celsius, this is 80 degrees Fahrenheit. You need at least 80 to sustain a storm. And if you notice, it goes through the 27 degrees, even the 28 degrees Celsius. 28 would be 82 or above degrees Fahrenheit. So it will start strengthening once it gets to that 27 and 28. And you can see as it goes towards Florida, you have a big strip of 27 and 28. So you have anywhere from 80 to 82 plus degree sea surface temperatures. And that is why it ramps up a little bit right before landfall. Also goes across and goes up through the northeast. Not losing too much strength, but a lot of the winds at this point will be east side loaded and hopefully staying offshore. But you can see how that builds up the wind. So as it gets closer towards northern Bahamas, it starts affecting y'all really late at night. Then as it goes towards Florida, you can see it strengthens up and brings all them winds where I showed you the warnings at. And it feeds a lot of high waves as well. So those temperatures will ramp this storm up as it comes on shore. So, so far, according to high resolution rapid refresh, when you look at your 10 meter winds and see what the strength is for this storm, you see it's not too strong. It's going through to 26 degrees Celsius below 80 degrees. But once it gets closer and it gets in that 80 and that 82, it starts really strengthening up, especially Wednesday morning. It goes from a tropical storm to a hurricane right by northern Bahamas and really strengthens up by 5 p.m. where it is on the edge of a hurricane. Then it goes through the 27 degrees, weakens down a little bit, and goes back to the 28 degrees and strengthens right back up to a low-grade hurricane by Wednesday night as this comes on shore with the strong winds. And so far, the latest update with high-resolution rapid refresh for your wind gusts. It is bringing 70 and 80. This is 90 in this red for northern Bahamas, so a lot of high wind gusts for northern Bahamas. Also for eastern Florida, right when it goes on landfall, you have chances for 80 miles per hour wind gust in all of this light brown, 70 plus in all of this brown, and the chances for the 90 is so far right on the edge offshore. I think this will help ramp up your tornado threat. But you can also see as it gets closer, once it gets around midnight tonight, you're going to start getting those winds kicking on northern Bahamas, and it will start strengthening up for Northern Bahamas as you go through early in the morning around 9 a.m., bringing a lot of rainfall as well. Then it's gonna start kicking on Florida and you see it does strengthen up and as it goes towards West Palm Beach, Port St. Lucie, this is where a lot of the strong winds will occur. So as we zoom in a little bit, you can see by 6 p.m. You, you're getting a lot of good winds. But as we get towards 9 p.m., then it's going to start getting even closer, being north side loaded. Now the winds are going to start coming towards Palm City. And this is going to continue to keep moving further and further to the north with the banding as well. It is going to go all the way up towards Fort Pierce and towards Sebastian. All this winds and heavy rainfall is coming your way. So far, this is by midnight on Wednesday going into Thursday morning. And it goes a little bit further 
of Florida. And you can see for the big wide spread, it, it is pulling all of these winds over. You will have a lot of heavy waves at time. And as you go through the day, you see it just stays there and spins with all this wind, all this rain. And now you're talking 3 p.m. by Thursday. Now it's affecting the Florida panhandle with all the winds and the rain. It will also go right back to the east and it'll affect Georgia, South Carolina, a lot of onshore flooding, especially for Charleston as it pulls all this tropical moisture up towards you and it will weaken down after that, but you still have winds and all this onshore flooding. And now we're talking by 9 a.m. on Friday. And so far the worst of the waves is gonna be by 9 p.m. on Wednesday when this comes on shore. And we're talking some big waves. Everybody else is still in the high teens to the 20s. But now you're still talking 30 to 33 foot waves that is coming anywhere towards Titusville, Daytona Beach, a little bit further, Palm Coast, all the way down to Port St. Lucie and further to the south, all the way down to Fort Lauderdale with 20 foot waves as this continue to come on shore and just keep beating on the east side of Florida. Really tearing up your beaches, but it's going to be a real dangerous situation. If you are in a trailer, if you're in an RV, you should think about evacuating. I'm not joking at all. This is going to be some strong winds, but the rainfall, the flooding, the storm surge is going to be some of the worst parts. You're going to go through a few cycles of high tide where it will just naturally bring with this full moon another foot or two of storm surge. So three to five feet could easily go up to four to six feet. We're talking a lot of storm surge, a lot of waves, a lot of beach erosion. So please, if you're in a trailer or an RV, think about going to a shelter for the day or two, just getting out of the way of this system, especially for East Coast Florida. But you can also see with high resolution rapid refresh that as it starts to come on shore for tomorrow, that it does get a lot of these strong cells that comes with this banding towards the coast. This is where you're gonna get your tornado threat from these cells just flinging a little north of the system all this banding bring potential chances for your tornadoes now i will do a shorter video this afternoon a quick update let everybody know what's going on with the newest information but starting tomorrow morning i will be live streaming this event probably for a quite some long time just to give you all some latest information the alerts tracking tornadoes and everything that we can give you as much information as i can to keep y'all as calm and comfortable as possible. The last thing you want to do is ramp up any, any kind of anxiety during this time. That's when you make mistakes and you do bad decisions. So I will be here for you. Make sure you share this information. Let others know what is going on with this system so they can prepare a little bit and be better for the outcome for them. Also, make sure you subscribe. And not only that, click the bell. YouTube doesn't always recommend the videos, so you got to click the bell to make sure you get all the notifications. Thank you so much for your time. God bless every single one of you. Hope you have a very blessed day out there today. Isaiah 41, 1 through 10. Keep silence before me, O islands, and let the people renew their strength. Let them come near, then let them speak. Let us come near together to judgment. Who raised up the righteous man from the east, called him to his foot, gave the nations before him, and made him rule over kings. He gave them as a dust to his sword, and as driven stubble to his bow. He pursued them and passed safely, even by the way that he had not gone with his feet who hath wrought and done it, calling the generations from the beginning, I the Lord, the first, and with the last, I am he. The isles saw it and feared. The ends of the earth were afraid, drew near and came. They helped every one his neighbor, and every one said to his brother, Be of good courage. So the carpenter encouraged the goldsmith and he that smootheth with the hammer him that smote the anvil, saying, It is ready for the soldering. And he fastened it with nails, that it should not be moved. But thou, Israel, art my servant, Jacob whom I have chosen, the seed of Abraham my friend. Thou whom I have taken from the ends of the earth, and called thee from the chief men thereof, and said unto thee, Thou art my servant. I have chosen thee, 
and not cast thee away. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Amen. <laughs> Make sure if you do want to be part of that live stream to get any kind of information throughout any part of the day's coming, make sure you subscribe and hit that bell. That's the most important part. YouTube don't recommend all the time. I don't know if it's because of the Bible, but then again, y'all know where to find me. All glory does go to Yahweh, God of Jacob, our Father. And I pray he still keeps all of you safe through this time, especially those and trail parks and RVs, please think about leaving for this event. May God bless you and keep you all safe. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Have a great day, everybody.